Welcome to our show entitled Supreme Master Ching Hai's Insights on the War in Ukraine, Important Advice and Predictions That Have Come True. Throughout the ages, humanity has faced a myriad of events with far-reaching impacts that signify the transition of eras on Earth. During these times of upheaval, enlightened masters have selflessly graced our planet with their presence, blessing us with their timeless wisdom and guidance, and calling us back to the righteous path of our divine origins. But will humanity heed their merciful warnings? Whether we choose the path of calamity or the path of salvation, the fate of our planet lies in our hands. In current times, our world faces unprecedented dangers from both natural and man-made disasters, such as the grave humanitarian crises brought upon through the unprovoked war in Ukraine, threatening the stability of our planet. On multiple occasions, our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai has forewarned us about this pivotal period and alerted global leaders of the urgent need for vegan law, respect for life, and the end of conflicts between nations so they may bring peace and prosperity to their countries. On today's program, we will reflect on some of the predictions and insights that Supreme Master Ching Hai has given about the war in Ukraine. February 26th, 2022, Putin. Uh, everybody hates Putin. Yes. And all this bad energy will make him sick or die soon. Putin is the one who's behind all this bloodshed, not just now, but before that, in other countries. He's going to go to hell and agonizing for millions of years. Wow. And after that, be reborn in some other region to suffer war right. and then be born again as animal people or hungry ghosts or being chased to be killed all the time. Oh. Ukrainian military intelligence chief Major General Kyrylo Budanov claimed Vladimir Putin has been deploying body doubles at recent public outings to hide his alleged health problems. The Ukrainian general claimed Putin's ears look different across several of the leader's public appearances. Budanov said, and I quote, The picture, let's say, of the ears is different and it's like a fingerprint. Each person's ear picture is unique. It cannot be repeated. He added, and I quote, They, as in Putin's body doubles, have different habits, different mannerisms, different gaits, sometimes even different heights if you look closely. Ukraine is asserting that the Russian president is seriously ill, which is why Putin is using body doubles to avoid making public appearances. February 26th, 2022. Sanctions. I was wondering, um, Ukrainian president, we see him asking for help for the world. So how can the world help master in this situation? Or could sanctions help in this case? Okay, that's the first step they do. Yes. And of course it hurts in some way. Yes. But uh, it won't stop this war. Mm. And the war is still going on because this guy, he's mad. Uh seems like he's mad to me. Yes. A normal person wouldn't do this for well, just anything like that. Sanctions generally fail because they end up hurting the wrong people. Ordinary folks in the country that applies them and in the country that is the target. What it also does is create a siege mentality of sorts which rallies support for even the most autocratic regimes. So strongmen like Vladimir Putin actually thrive on sanctions because it becomes a rallying point against a West which Putin says is hell-bent on unseating him. Last week, a column in the Guardian newspaper had argued that trade sanctions, as opposed to military aid, were the most ill-conceived and counterproductive policy in recent international history. Here's the reality. Sanctions will not defeat Vladimir Putin. What will defeat him is war and the result of that war. Russia is either going to win this war or lose this war on the battlefield, not in commercial ports or airports.
March 18th, 2022. Annexation. The thing is, if you force a country to be absorbed into your country, people don't like that. Right. All right, Master. Especially when you use a brutal way to do that. Of course, nobody will like you. Yes, that's true. They will hate you, hate you to the bone. And you cannot govern that country too long. Sooner or later, somebody would revolt against you or kill you or assassinate you quietly or something. Yes, Master. Or even maybe your own people will do it because they also cannot bear it. Cannot bear your brutality and your unreasonable way of brutal acting against other countries' citizens. Yes, yes Master. Yes, Master. Like controlling or tyranny. Yes. And people will revolt against you sooner or later. That's right, Master. The, uh, these are the latest pictures from uh, Kherson, which is uh, the, the uh, only major Ukrainian capital to fall to the Russians. And this would suggest that uh, there's a great deal of frustration amongst the Russian troops that are occupying that city because the local civilian population has been protesting every day. And today it spilled out with the, with the Russian troops came out firing automatic weapons. Uh, they were throwing hand grenades and stun grenades, forcing that unarmed crowd to scatter for safety. Um, there are reports that a number of people were wounded, a number of people apparently were caught and beaten uh, and kicked. The uh, Ukrainian authorities say that this is, uh, you know, to fire on unarmed civilians constitutes a war crime. February 26, 2022. Soldiers. They had to fight, but I don't think all the soldiers of the Russian army who are sent to Ukraine love to fight. No, I don't think no, so. Yes. Because they know it is unethical. Right, mm. yes. Immoral, yes. To go into uh, any land or just making some lame excuse to kill people. Right. Yeah, and to right. take their property, take their land, kill their children, their women, elderly and other people. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Right. So nobody would like that. Nobody with a minimum standard of moral ethics would like that. Right, right. for sure. When will Russians understand that our commander-in-chief has been a liar? He didn't only tell lies to us. He told lies to the whole Russia. I'd like to again sincerely ask the whole Ukrainian people for forgiveness. All mothers, please call your children who are in the military and ask them to return to Russia and uh, not to commit any crimes against uh, innocent civilians. March 6, 2022, the West. They could have also put an array of army bigger than Putin's because there are more countries than Putin's. Also at the border of Ukraine, just to his yeah. yes. prevention. So that Russia will think twice if they want to go in to invade Ukraine. They do nothing, did nothing. Let all, everything open for Russia to come in as if inviting them already with an invitation card. Yes, exactly. The inaction from NATO, EU, and the whole world is also acting as an accomplice yes. with Russia to kill Ukrainian people. This morning, American troops far from home, training in Latvia alongside NATO allies, the last frontier between Russia and the West. What message do you think exercises like this send to our potential adversaries? I think they send that we're ready. And we are, we are again, a 30-member alliance um, that's based on common values of, of freedom. NATO announced today that it was increasing the number of troops in four NATO member countries that either border Ukraine or are near it. Tonight, responding to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, involving more than 100,000 Russian troops, NATO is set to put a force of 300,000 on high alert. An unprecedented escalation, seven times the current number. As a Roman general once said, if you want peace, prepare for war. 100,000 American troops are stationed in Europe, preparing for a shift in posture.
May 15th, 2022. Payback. All this, I think they should make Russia pay back if the war is over or somehow make them pay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Make Putin pay because he's very rich. People suspect that he's the richest man in the world. Yes, I think so. I think that's what they said. Of course, whatever he wants, he has. Russia needs to be held to account for this appalling war uh, that has been perpetrated in Ukraine. And we are looking at options for uh, the deployment of Russian assets. We've discussed it as, at the G7 and many of our allies are also looking at how we can make sure that Russia is contributing to Ukrainian recovery. It was also in, in the history that uh, those countries uh, which have uh, triggered wars after so the peace agreement were forced to, to, to finance also the reconstruction of those countries which are uh, so the victims of the aggression. April 3rd, 2022, neutral. In readiness for a peace deal with Russia, Ukraine's President Zelensky has said his government is willing to adopt a neutral status meaning that they would not link militarily with other allies, which would also mean not to join NATO. Would this be a good move? Not, not, not if Putin is still alive. Oh, no. Right. But if they have no choice, and maybe this is a temporary choice, until they have a better choice. But why? Uh, Ukraine is winning. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If you give in to Putin this, he will do more later. Oh. Oh. Just like they gave in with Crimea and then about Donbass. Mm. Yes. And now Putin wants the whole Ukraine. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. it's so much bloodshed. Yes, yes. Master. Yes, yes, master. master. So in the long run, he will do it again. Maybe temporarily is good. I'm not sure about that. This is going to continue for a while. And the reason why it's going to continue for a while is the Russians are going to continue to push forces in there and going to continue to grind through this fight. Putin doesn't want to see himself as a loser here. May 2nd, 2022, energy. They can put the coal back, coal industry, put it back until they find something better. Yes, yes. Because that is not the worst source of global warming. It's the methane, it's the animal people, industry, that gives out the most methane and hits the climate the most. Yes, Master. Right. 80 something percent. Is from methane, from the animal people industry. Yes. Yes. So coal mine or gas mine and oil and all that, they should continue. Yes. And then they will have enough fuel. They don't have to import from, from Russia. Some countries in the European Union are warning that they'll need to move to emergency measures and, and shift their reliance back to coal. So. Austria's government has agreed to convert a gas-fired power plant to use coal in the face of an energy emergency. Germany announced on Sunday its latest plan to boost gas storage levels and said it could restart coal-fired power plants that it had aimed to phase out. Now, the Dutch government has announced that coal-fired energy plants in the Netherlands will be allowed to increase their production as part of efforts to reduce reliance on Russian gas. And Italy says it may declare a heightened state of alert on gas this coming week if Russia continues to curb its supplies, which could ramp up the production production at coal-fired plants. May 15th, 2022. Concessions. A diplomatic spat has now kicked off between Paris and Kyiv over a comment by French President Emmanuel Macron. President Macron said that it was essential to not humiliate Russia globally so that once the war stops, diplomatic ties can be re-established real quick. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba took to Twitter to criticize the remark, saying that the key focus should be on how to put Russia in its place instead of avoiding humiliation. Est-ce que vous considérez aujourd'hui que aucune concession ne doit être faite à la Russie sur tous les territoires conquis dans le Donbass notamment, l'intégralité territoriale doit-elle être rétablie C'est à l'Ukraine de le décider. This kind of mentality, how can Macron support it it's not about the land that you can give away or not give away. It's people who live in it as well. Yes. You can't just sell your people to anybody who comes in using brutal force to snatch it. Right. That's right. Suppose it happened to France. Would Macron do it? 
Of course not. Oh, he wouldn't. Oh, I hope not. Oh, I hope not, yes, sir. Who knows? If he's a coward, he would give it just so that he can be safe. It doesn't concern him in France yet, and he's already showing his weakness. Yes, yes. yes. French President Emmanuel Macron has fluttered about with his dubious diplomacy. Countless calls to Putin, endless consultations with other government leaders, and an ongoing parade of pious pronounces have achieved nothing. Putin treats him as would Lenin. That is, in Lenin's words, quote, a useful idiot, end of quote. Macron is now publicly calling for Ukrainians to negotiate a deal with Putin that would award the Moscow monster a big part of their country. In other words, hand Putin a powerful geographic base from which to launch future offensives against the rump of what's left of Ukraine after the Kremlin rebuilds its mauled military. Paris would have far more sway if it took a vigorous, serious lead in recognizing the threat Putin poses to Europe's security and indeed to that of the free world. That would include pouring far more offensive weapons, including fighter aircraft into Ukraine, and publicly urging the still hesitant Biden administration to do the same, prodding the Germans to deliver to Kyiv the weaponry it has already promised, and then sending in more and lead the way to provide naval escorts to have neutral shipping pick up desperately needed grain from Ukrainian ports on the Black Sea. In this world of weak, vacillating, and incompetent leaders, Macron could become a global colossus by taking a firm stand. He could start by doing for Biden what Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher allegedly did to President George H.W. Bush in 1990 when an Iraq seized neighboring Kuwait. She admonished Bush don't go wobbly, George. Instead, Macron is appealing to the worst instincts of Biden and his team. Indeed, he is aping the appeasement policies of Paris and London in the 1930s towards Hitler. Give the Nazis territory and they won't wage war for more. Putin wants Ukraine and then more. Macron's latest declarations only confirm to Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea that the West has no stomach for sustained resistance to their ugly ambitions. May 2nd, 2022, Germany. There was the president of uh, Germany who wanted to come to Kiev, and they refused him. They accepted every other leader except Germany's president because he was, it's been long ago already that he's for Russia. But, uh, Never mind, he was wrong, but now if he wants to come to you, that means he knew he's wrong already. So I think Kiev should have forgiven him and welcomed him. March 6th, 2022. Principal. Ukraine is not exactly feeling the support. Ukrainian President Zelensky has accused European leaders of abandoning his country saying they are too scared to commit to Ukraine's protection. Today, I have asked 27 European leaders whether Ukraine will be in NATO. I have asked directly. Everyone is afraid. No one answers. It is not about the size of any country. It is the principle, the principle of NATO, the principle of the EU, the principle of the free world, that you should protect somebody weak and meek, especially when they have the same principles that you uphold so high. Yes, yes. The principle of freedom, the principle of fairness, the free world motto that they adhere to, the same with NATO. They joined together because they wanted to have strength of the united entity. Yes. So just to protect their freedom, their sovereignty of each country. So they joined together. So that others will not dare to attack them because they're strong, united, we stand. Yes. March 2nd, 2022, Reliance. They worry that uh, if they go too far or too hard, then uh, Russia will not give them cheap oil and gas. The whole of Europe depends on uh, Russia for gas. All right. And America also crazy. Imagine that. Oh. I'm not sure if anything else is more important because this is just burning in their own home. Yes. <laughs> America is supposed to have their own gas and Canada also has, I mean, gas or oil, whatever. They they can have it, you know, they can be independent. Yes, Master. Yes, master. But uh, instead of that, uh, 
uh, Biden just to to look good, you know, like an environmentalist and stuff like that. Uh, so don't use oil, don't use this and that. But they have it. Mm. America can also supply Europe if they uh, go ahead with their project. Right. I don't know if most Americans know this, but America is importing 209,000 barrels of oil a day from Russia and 500,000 barrels of petrochemicals. And I think that's a shame. I'm ashamed that the government is doing that as an American. We should stop that immediately. Two, if we give some tax incentives to the oil companies, we can start drilling everywhere, opening every pipeline, and sending oil, not only become energy independent, but start sending oil and natural gas to Europe, which would make our country richer and would virtually bankrupt Russia. Also, by uh, pumping more oil, we were going to lower the inflation rate. We're going to add more American jobs, and it's going to put our country in a lot better place. So without going to the military option, we can do an economic option that I think would put us in an absolutely fabulous place. Tesla founder Elon Musk even jumped on the bandwagon. He tweeted, hate to say it, but we need to increase oil and gas output immediately. Extraordinary times demand extraordinary measures. Obviously, this would negatively affect Tesla, but sustainable energy solutions simply cannot react instantaneously to make up for Russian oil and gas exports. Lauren Boebert replied to Elon's tweet with, America is funding Russians' war by buying Russian oil and gas rather than producing our own. Texas Senator Ted Cruz retweeted the billionaire's tweet and said, couldn't agree more, unleash American energy now. The UK, for example, already has enough wind and solar projects with planning permission, just as yet unbuilt, to make up for the country's electricity shortfall caused by cutting off Russian gas supplies. Ambitious schemes in low carbon heating all over Europe could reduce dependence on natural gas, modernize the workforce, and provide a post-COVID economic boost. The union's been looking at alternative sources of oil and gas, and the potential includes Algeria to Turkmenistan and beyond. It is very challenging, but it is doable, and we can uh, increase so the LNG deliveries. And, and in fact, um, LNG deliveries have already increased significantly, and particularly from the United States. We can make this uh, progress uh, very fast. Today, we're taking our ambition yet to another level to make sure that we become independent of Russian fossil fuels as quickly as possible. Much of the West plans to completely cut out Russian gas and oil by the end of the year in a bid to defund Vladimir Putin's war machine. June 3rd, 2022, joining. I'm glad the world comes back to show Ukraine the unity and support. It would be best if they let them join the EU and NATO immediately. That will be the best unification up front. Yes. yes. The horrendous tragedies and global turmoil brought on by the war in Ukraine are a stark reminder for leaders to reassess their own morals and the consequences of their actions. As Supreme Master Ching Hai emphasizes, life is ephemeral and it is time for people to wake up. I hope people will wake up and remember God and give thanks every day and be grateful, be humble and change their way of life. For example, as much as they treasure their lives, they should treasure other people's lives by not making war, but making peace and treasure other beings' lives who also love life and not suffering and death, like the animal people and share what they can share with the neighbors in need, then our world will have no problem. With sorrowful hearts for the noble Ukrainian citizens and all those affected by the war, our deep gratitude to our most benevolent Supreme Master Ching Hai for always working so selflessly and courageously to bring peace to our world. We pray that humanity soon awakens to their godly nature and treasure all lives so that all beings may thrive in stability and harmony on earth. Vegan, if we still want to live.
Cherish viewers, thank you for joining us on today's program. Supreme Master Ching Hai's insights on the war 